everybody and welcome to something a little bit different. I am Dan, if you don't recognise me from The Voice, and I am the creator of the Signals to Danger podcast. Um, I haven't done many videos yet and this is a little bit of a new thing for me, so I hope you enjoy it. It's the first one in my series I'm calling Signals Explains and the aim is I hope to unpick some of the details of the railway and the safety features um, in more detail than I probably can in the podcast and give people a bit of a good background and grounding in some of these matters. Anyway, this time we're going to start off with a relatively simple subject, level crossings. Um, and with the power of just my engaging personality and some very rudimentary uh, animation skills I'm picking up as I'm going along, I'm hoping we can have a look at how people get across our railway line safely. So let's start out with just a, a bit of a railway, uh, happily sitting there in the middle of the countryside. Oh, a little bit unsafe just like that. Let's stick some fences in there so you know, I can stop anybody just walking out into it. That's better, but hang on. What if we wanted to pass between this field and the next one on the other side of the line? Well, it's time for us to add a crossing into the mix. This is about as, as basic as you can get. It's a foot crossing. The footpath comes up on one side of the line. There's normally a stile or a small gate. You climb over, you walk over the boarding, over the track itself, after you look both ways very carefully, and cross the line on foot. Now, clearly they're not just left footpath or track that. There is some safety precautions in place, and simply, the basic one is signage. But... That's great if you just want to get a man or a man and his dog across the line. What if you wanted to get something a little bit more substantial over there? So, say, a car or a herd of sheep. Well, let's have a look at this. This is your very, very bare bones level crossing. The user worked crossing. Normally, these are a pair of gates and the, the footway, the boardway across the lines itself. And that allows people to get themselves and the vehicles and the sheep and the cows, etc., etc., from one field on one side of the line to another field on the other side of the line. Pedestrians, now, was they're crossing user work crossings, they can look left and right, and that gives them enough of a guide as to whether or not it's safe to cross. But if you are taking 30 unruly sheep over there or a combine harvester in a trailer, it could take a little bit more time than that to get over the line. So it's time for us to stick another safety feature in there, the telephone. If you want to cross this line with one of those slower pieces of equipment or a slower group of animals, you need to phone up the signaler and make sure that it is actually safe for you to cross, that you're not just going to get a train coming upon you without you expecting it. You need more time, so you need to make sure it's safe for you. You ring him and he will tell you whether or not it's safe. All this is great for loads of situations, but if we were to take this very basic crossing and put it in a place where the line speed is really high or where there's a, a curve that you can't really see enough down the track, then it's not quite going to cut it in terms of safety. So we have yet another safety feature that we can slap in there. A little traffic light. This is the answer. It turns a user worked crossing into an MWL or a miniature warning light crossing. When the line is clear, that light is green. When the line's not clear, that light is red. If it's red, don't cross. Dead, dead, easy. All of these options are really good and they work quite well on these um, lower use tracks and trails, but what if we wanted to scale things up to a real road? Well, then the safest option for us is what's called a grade separated crossing, where the road and the railway they cross each other at different levels, so a bridge, a tunnel, or an underbridge. Very, very simple, but much more expensive. And they take up a lot of room, and especially in urban areas, there are just times when that is not an option. So, that leaves us with plenty of situations where a crossing is a valid option. So let's go back to our little bit of railway. Uh, we can probably leave the fences out this time, we know that they're there. And let's replace our track with a road. The foot track, not the railway track. The railway track's going to stay a railway track. Back in the good old days, the roads were protected by gates. Literally wooden gates. 
these were operated by signalmen from the adjacent box or by other railway staff, and they are known now as an MG crossing, or manual gates. The gates were pushed shut during using manpower, or sometimes they were wound shut using a mechanical solution like a wheel. Um, where they still exist now, they're also sometimes protected by another system, which is known as lights, because it's just warning lights. The lights at a lower crossing will show an amber light first for a couple of seconds just to warn people that the crossing is going to start closing. And then they will show red alternating flashing lights. And they're different to your normal traffic lights. Because a normal traffic light can be passed by, say, an emergency vehicle on its way to I mean, Alternating red flashing lights, they cannot. They can't be crossed by any vehicle in any circumstances. Well... We've got our lights in place and we've got our gates, but these gates, I think, are looking a little bit dated now. So let's look at what the options are in the future, the more modern ones, which we call the MCB crossing, manually controlled barriers. These exist where there's a signal box which is directly adjacent to the barriers and the signalman can check before closing them that they're actually clear. And sometimes the box isn't right next to it, but it's within 400 metres and... The crossing is clearly visible from the box itself, in which case that crossing can be opened and shut from there, but we don't call it an MCB anymore. It's an MCBR, which is the manually controlled barriers remotely monitored. As we've developed new technology, it means that manually controlled barriers can now be located miles away from the signal box, which is actually controlling them. And that means we can enter some new technology into the piece. And there's no real surprises for guessing what that one is. It is the MCB CCTV, manually controlled barriers with closed circuit television. The CCTV based system, it's successful in making well, a lot of signal boxes redundant. Suddenly you don't have to have Joe Blog sat in a box here or 400 meters away from a crossing and watching it all the time. What you've got is one signaler in a signal box many, many miles away or a, a rail operating centre who's monitoring several crossings all at the same time. Um, they've been introduced since about the 70s and they've helped to make crossings safer. There is another type of MCB crossing which has been introduced more recently, which is the MCBOD, the manually operated barrier with obstacle detection. For this crossing, we need to take another piece of kit and throw that into the mix, the obstacle detector. This development takes the, the manually controlled concept and it, well, in that concept, the signaler will press the button to close the barriers, watch the barriers close and make sure the crossing is actually clear before he releases the protecting signals. But that's rearranged slightly in the, the MCBOD. The signaler will trigger the barriers to close, but the release of the signals is controlled by the obstacle detection cross system. If that detects obstacles on the crossing, so cars, pedestrians, the errant cardboard box, it will not release the signals. But if it says it's fine, jobs are good. They're first used in sort of 2010, but they're now one of the safest types of crossings we actually have on the UK rail network. So all of those crossing sequences that we've talked about are triggered by signals. They're manually controlled barriers, the MCBs. But there is another type of crossing in the mix, the automatic crossing. Now to start looking at that, let's go back to our crossing, knock a few of the features out. Instead of the full barriers, let's add a half barrier in then. That will just be on the entry lanes to the crossing. So your one crossing will have one barrier and another barrier. That is a different type of crossing, the AHB, the automatic half barrier. On the approaches to the crossing, trains trigger the lights and the barriers which block the road and warn the traffic. Normally get around about 27 seconds or so from the first amber light to the point where the train is rocketing through that crossing at up to 100 miles an hour. Which might sound quite daunting, but not quite as daunting as this. Let's take away the barriers and let's add in a St Andrew's Cross above the lights. Now to save some money, when a lot of the manual gates and signal boxes were removed, some automatic crossings were introduced, and this is about as basic as they got, the AOCR. Automatic Open Crossing Remotely Monitored. To set this in, well, in this setup, the crossing lights are triggered in the same way, and the train gets a certain distance away from it. 
the lights will light and the warning siren will siren, but there is no barrier, no barrier to block the road. The line speed on an AOCR could have been up to 75 miles an hour and there were no gates to maintain, which was a plus side for the bank balance, but there was no barrier to vehicles getting onto the crossing. And in 1986, there was an accident at an AOCR in Lockington in East Yorkshire, which essentially started the demise of the AOCR crossing. It also started a vast reduction in the numbers of the slightly better controlled AOCLs, which were automatic open crossings, but locally monitored, and they had some additional safety features. Now, at this current point in time, there is only one AOCR left in the entire country, which is in Rosari in Scotland, and the vast majority of AOCLs, well, they've been converted to safer options. The sensible solution to do that is to add a barrier into the traffic, and the most cost-effective way of doing that is to add only half barriers. Now, where this was done to existing crossings, they became known as AOCL plus B, automatic open crossing, locally monitored, plus barriers. You can also get the very similar automatic op automatic barrier crossing locally monitored, which is a development of the AOCL, which was designed to have barriers from the very start. <sighs> Big breath, we're nearly there. Thank you for your patience so far. The last barrier that we'll talk about is the AFBCL, the Automatic Full Barrier Crossing Locally Monitored. These are the enhanced version of the ABCL and they have full barriers across the width of the road. They have obstacle detection equipment as well. And when the first barrier goes down and the second barrier goes down, before the exit lane barriers drop, the obstacle detection has to prove that that crossing is not blocked. The exit barriers won't descend if there's pedestrians or cars there to stop them getting trapped in. And looking forwards, these really should be one of, if not the safest type of crossing that we have on our network. In any case, that was a rather breathless quick rundown of all the types of level crossings out there. I've probably missed one or two. Hey, hit me in the comments if I have. And uh, next time you're out there, you might have a little bit more of an idea of what you're looking at, or next time you're listening to one of the episodes and I talk about them, you might have more of an idea about what you should be picturing in your mind's eye. If you do want to find out more about when these level crossings have not gone to plan, then please come and have a listen to the podcast. If you listen to episodes 15 or 23, that is Lockington and Morton on Lug, and they are two times when level crossings just did not go to plan. They're available on YouTube, and they're also available wherever you get your podcasts. So we'd love you to come and have a listen and see what you think. In the meantime, please feel free to uh, to see what else we've got out there. Um, anyway, that's enough from me. Thank you for tuning in, and until the next time, travel safe. Whew. One take, and I've just blown straight into that without that on. You can tell I'm a professional. Cheers, guys. Cheers.